The Haditha killings refers to the incident in which 24 unarmed Iraqi men, women and children, all civilians, were killed by a group of United States Marines on November 19, 2005 in Haditha, a city in the western Iraqi province of Al-Anbar. The dead included several children and elderly people, who were shot multiple times at close range while unarmed. It has been alleged that the killings were a retribution for the attack on a convoy of Marines with an improvised explosive device that killed Lance Corporal Miguel Terrazas. Many news reports have compared the incident to the My Lai massacre. An initial Marine Corps communique reported that 15 civilians were killed by the bomb's blast and eight insurgents were subsequently killed when the Marines returned fire against those attacking the convoy. However, other evidence uncovered by the media contradicted the Marines' account. A Time magazine reporter's questions prompted the United States military to open an investigation into the incident. The investigation claimed it found evidence that supports accusations that U.S. Marines deliberately shot civilians, including unarmed women and children, according to an anonymous Pentagon official. At least three officers were officially reprimanded for failing to properly initially report and investigate the killings. On December 21, 2006, eight Marines from 3rd Battalion, 1st Marines were charged in connection with the incident. In the course of the Article 32 hearings, conflicting testimony was presented, some of it rebutting the media-cited case made by accusers and prosecutors of the Marines. At one point in the hearings, the investigating officer told prosecution lawyers, the account you want me to believe does not support unpremeditated murder. He conceded that the central issue was who is to be believed and that he was disinclined to recommend a trial when he thought it was unlikely any Iraqi would agree to come to the U.S. to testify. On August 9, 2007, L.T. Gen. James Mattis dropped the charges against Lance Corporal Justin Sharrett, who had been accused of murder, and against Captain Randy Stone, accused of failing to investigate the incident. On August 23, the investigating officer recommended charges against Lance CPL. Stephen Tatum be dropped as well but on October 19, his commanding officer decided the charges should be lowered to involuntary manslaughter, reckless endangerment and aggravated assault. By June 17, 2008, six defendants had had their cases dropped and a seventh found not guilty. The exception was former Staff Sergeant, now Private Frank Watt Eric, on October 3, 2007. The Article 32 hearing investigating officer recommended that Watt Eric be tried for negligent homicide in the deaths of two women and five children, and that charges of murder be dropped. Further charges of assault and manslaughter were ultimately dropped, and Watt Eric was convicted of a single count of negligent dereliction of duty on January 24, 2012. Watt Eric received a rank reduction and pay cut but avoided jail time. Iraqis expressed disbelief and voiced outrage after the six-year U.S. military prosecution ended with none of the Marines sentenced to jail. A lawyer for the victims from Haditha said, This is an assault on humanity. He, as well as the Iraqi government, said they might bring the case to international courts. In 2011, the New York Times found of classified transcripts of military interviews from an investigation into the Haditha killings. In these interviews, Marines said so many civilians were found dead after being killed by unknown factions in the Iraq conflicts that civilian deaths seemed routine, and one sergeant testified that he would order his men to shoot vehicles that failed to stop at military checkpoints even if it were possible that children could be in the car. Events Background Since the 2003 invasion of Iraq, U.S. Military forces had been stationed in and around Haditha to control the Haditha Dam, a major hydroelectric installation. The area had seen several clashes between U.S. forces and insurgent groups since the beginning of the Iraq War, with many fatalities on both sides. 
A contemporary Time magazine poll reported that 85% of Iraq's Sunnis opposed coalition forces, as compared to 65% of Iraqis overall. Conditions in Haditha itself were known to have been deteriorating under militant rule, and attacks on U.S. Troops as well as executions of suspected informants were common. Roadside bombing on November 19, 2005, an improvised explosive device, composed of 155mm artillery shells and explosives filled propane tanks, was placed underneath asphalt some time before 3rd Battalion, 1st Marines arrived in Haditha, the IED. Targeted a squad from 3 over 1 Kilo Company, 3rd Platoon, which was on a resupply convoy. Lance Corporal Miguel Terrazas was killed instantly at 7.15 a.m. Lance Corporal Terrazas was driving the Humvee which was hit by the bomb. Lance Corporal James Crossan was in the passenger seat of the Humvee and was thrown out of the vehicle and trapped under the rear passenger tire. The Humvee was split in half. Private First Class Salvador Guzman was in the back of the vehicle conducting security for the convoy and was thrown from the Humvee. Both Crossan and Guzman were taken to a landing zone to be picked up by helicopter and sent to get further medical attention. Crossan was medically discharged from the United States Marine Corps due to the severe wounds he received that day. Guzman returned to active duty once his wounds healed and went on a second deployment with 3 over 1 to Iraq in April 2007. Killings and immediate aftermath 5 Iraqi men, a taxi driver and 4 teenagers, were ordered out of their car and shot dead in the street, principally by Staff Sergeant. Frank Watt Eric, after their deaths, L.T. William T. Callip, according to his statements to investigators, arrived on the scene. Callip and others report receiving small arms fire, which they attributed to a nearby house. Callip gave the order to take the house. Nineteen of those killed were in three adjacent houses which U.S. Marines entered, throwing in grenades and shooting with semi-automatic rifles. According to Callip, the Marines cleared it the way they had been trained to clear it, which is frags first. It was clear just by the looks of the room that frags went in and then the house was prepped and sprayed like with a machine gun and then they went in. And by the looks of it, they just... They went in, cleared the room, everybody was down, on November 20, 2005. A Marine press release from Camp Blue Diamond in Ramadi reported the deaths of a U.S. Marine and 15 civilians. It said that the death of the civilians was a consequence of a roadside bomb and Iraqi insurgents. The initial U.S. military statement read, A U.S. Marine and 15 civilians were killed yesterday from the blast of a roadside bomb in Haditha. Immediately following the bombing, gunmen attacked the convoy with small arms fire. Iraqi army soldiers and Marines returned fire, killing eight insurgents and wounding another, Eman Walid. A nine-year-old child who witnessed the incident described the U.S. Marines entering their house. She said, I couldn't see their faces very well, only their guns sticking into the doorway. I watched them shoot my grandfather, first in the chest and then in the head. Then they killed my granny, the director of the local hospital in Haditha, Dr. Wahad, said that the 24 bodies were brought into American Humvees to the hospital around midnight on November 19. While the Marines claim that the victims had been killed by shrapnel from the roadside bomb and that the men were saboteurs, Dr. Wahad said that there were no organs slashed by shrapnel in any of the bodies. He further claimed that it appeared that the victims were shot in the head and chest from close range soon after the killings. The Marine Corps paid $38,000 total to the families of 15 of the dead civilians. Evidence about the killings video shot by the co-founder of the Hammurabi human rights group, Teher Tibet, which instigated Tim McGurk's original Time magazine article, and cell phone photos reportedly taken by one of the Marines the day after the killings have been put forth as evidence that the killings were methodical and without resistance. 
In particular, the video shot by Tibet shows the bodies of the children and women with gunshot wounds, bullet holes in the interior walls of the house, and blood stains on the floor. Insufficient evidence has come to light to account for insurgents hiding in the houses that first came under attack. The only AK-47 that was discovered that day, apparently a household defensive weapon, of the type that is legal and common in Iraq. No one has claimed that the rifle had been fired. William Langewiescher in Rules of Engagement, Vanity Fair, November 2006 McGurk's first article online stated that the Hammurabi Human Rights Group had coordinated with Human Rights Watch. A correction was issued when no official links could be confirmed. McGurk, who was based in Jerusalem, declined to testify at the hearings.